So tell us about the business part of mm -hmm. your life, because mm -hmm. you have built from nothing, really, a really substantial business. I mean, we're at the small business yeah. conference here, but yours isn't a small business anymore. No, it's you know, certainly, no, certainly not small anymore, not as large as I think it'll one day be, but, but it, it has been uh, incredibly you know, inspiring for me to be here and, and, and watch all of these entrepreneurs who are having all of this amazing success. For me, it wasn't always that way. In the beginning, it started, you know, it was really, really tough trying to get the, my first show up. I saved $12,000. And, uh, of my own money, working, saving, uh, uh, working as a bill collector and used car salesman, trying to get the play up off the ground. And many years, it didn't, it didn't work. And in 1998, everything started to turn around. And I, I took that and moved into uh, film, and then into television, and owning the studio. And here we are. So, where did the drive come to become an entrepreneur, to build a business? Because you're a very successful performer. You could have been a very successful performer, had a great career, made a fair amount of money, and things like that. What drove you to actually build an? Uh, an empire. If well, I can my call father that. was a guy who uh, who was a carpenter, and he made he would come home and make eight hundred dollars. He'd be really excited. But I would always see the guy who who sold the house after he had built it, right? And he would make eighty thousand dollars. So I was always more interested in being the guy who actually sold the house and rather than the guy who was out building it. So I think that's where it comes from. But also, uh, I, I like to create a freedom of trying to recreate things and, and introduce new ways to do uh, film and television and, and things like that. So I needed to be in a situation that fostered my uh, ability to be able to do that. So I think of uh, the, the center of that creative world being located somewhere around Hollywood, yeah. out on the West Coast. Yeah. I've spent a little time out there doing a little bit of business. They're not always receptive to other ideas, yeah. to people coming in from the outside. And you're coming in, in a sense, from way in the outside. You're coming in from Atlanta, Georgia, for goodness sakes. How difficult was it to break into that, you know, really, that clan, that tribe? I, you know what was great about it for me is my, uh, I, I had this, this wonderful opportunity to be on tour doing these shows and performing of what's affectionately known as the Chitlin Circuit, which allowed me to, get, to garner millions of fans. So when I actually came to Hollywood and tried to do my first movie there, and they were like, uh, what is this? We're not doing this. You know, I was able, I was like, listen, I'm just going to go home and do it out of my trunk and sell it, um, you know, uh, DVDs as I had been doing before. I'm grateful for Lionsgate and that relationship and the people over there who said, come on, we'll let you do it your way. So, so setting up in Atlanta, it allowed me again to have the opportunity to do it my way, which has been, which has been incredible. So you mentioned Lionsgate. Was yeah. there a person there that really was open-minded, that was open to you? Yeah, yeah. Mike Pasternak, hands down, was the guy who said, this, we, we need to do this with you. And, and since then, it's been just a love fest. Uh, John Feltheimer over there. It's been really, really, really great. And you know what's wonderful is I've had incredible partnerships over the years who've allowed me to build a studio and who've helped to, to uh, support all that I've done, like even Oprah and David Zasloff at uh, Discovery. It's been, they've just been incredible partners for me and, and now moving on to Viacom and, and everything that's happening there. I'm really, really excited about it and Paramount Pictures. I'm really excited about this next chapter. But you've kept your feet firmly in Atlanta yeah. and just outside of Atlanta. Yeah. Why is that? Did you ever think, actually, I should move west? I should go out with everybody else? No, no Atlanta's always been home for me. When I first moved there at 22 years old, I thought, this is the promised land. This is where I'm going to try to build my dream. And to have the support of uh, Governor Nathan Deal and the Georgia Film Commission, to, that's, that's bringing in all of this incredible, uh, these incredible films and these incredible crews that are coming up in Georgia. And so many people working. To have about 9,000 people go through the gates at Tyler Berry Studios working over this last year has been phenomenal to see. So. I'm just, Atlanta's, Atlanta's home. I'll be there. I'll be there. The media industry is going through a huge transformation right yeah. now. We see it almost every day, mm -hmm. particularly with over the top, mm -hmm. direct to subscriber, yeah. computer delivered. Video dri driven on your on your mobile device. Actually, how is that affecting your business? How do you prepare for that? Being a content provider, it's actually uh, allowed a lot more avenues and revenues because because of there's people are consuming content in so many different ways on so many different levels. So um, I'm excited about it. You know, I, I'm from the generation that wants to watch a television, but you know, my son who's three years old, he was always looking for an iPad. He's not, you know. So I, in 20 years, I don't know where it will be, but I think it's just very important to pivot as the as the country and technology pivots to stay on the cutting edge and not just be so ingrained in this is how it's always been done that we are not open to change.
Got to be open to change. Uh, how did you learn to become a successful businessman? I mean, you said your father was a carpenter. Yeah. So you didn't learn it from your father. No. Uh, did you learn it yourself? Did you surround yourself with people who knew it? How did it come to be? I have paid for a Harvard education about 50 times in the amount of money <laughs> that I've lost in mistakes. So I'm, I, I try, trial and error. I made a lot of mistakes. And then I just started picking up the phone and calling people and asking questions. And it's been great uh, over the years to be able to call over and say, listen, I'm dealing with this, this, and this. She said, oh, I went through that in 1986. Here's what you need to do. So to have those kind of uh, people in my life and, and being able to ask questions and, and get information has been extremely helpful. So the people in the audience who haven't made those mistakes yet, yeah. Yeah. that are starting out, who are getting going, whether it's a small business or a part of a big corporation, give us an example of something that really you learned a lot from. You had to make the mistake in order to really say, okay, I know now how that works. I'm not going to do that again. Oh, well, listen, just accounting, just coming up and taxes in the first few years that I started making money, I realized that my sister, who was keeping the receipts, <laughs> this is so funny, <laughs> keeping the receipts in the folder and trying to do the taxes, that wasn't necessarily going to work when you've got 400 employees <laughs> and we're talking about a billion dollar uh, company here. So so just in, in that alone, learning to let go, let, let and understanding that people know what they know at that level and learning to know when it's time to go to the next level and get some more help. So tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now. Pa Black Panthers, very much in the news these days. Yeah, well, they were the first, this is, this is what's so great, what I love about this, Black Panther was the first movie to shoot uh, at, on the stage at Tyler Perry Studios, mm. one of the new one mm. of the new stages. So they did their reshoots there, and that was really really exciting for me for that movie to be the first one there. But so there's a yeah. lot of buzz actually about yeah. the fact that the, there's such an emphasis on African American actors mm. and characters. Mm. Does that feel like an opportunity to you, to a responsibility? Do you think it's beside the point? I, you know what it is? I've, I've been aware of it from day one, and that's why how I've been able to build this business, that, that we were African-American people were a huge market that's been underserved, and now all of a sudden there's this surge of, of people realizing and understanding through the research and the data proving that African-Americans are, are consuming most of, a, lot of, a lot of content. So, so I think it's a great and wonderful opportunity for so many people who've never had a chance and never had an opportunity to, to be able to express themselves in talent or storytelling. So it's wonderful. Is that an indication that our society is beginning to change or is changing? Could that movie have been made 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and been successful? No, I don't think it could have been. I think it's the time now. I think there's a whole new uh, energy and old generation and millennials who are just open, more open-minded to every uh, kind of person and every kind of race. And just, you know, I look at my son who who at three years old still has not seen color, which is, and I'm trying to keep him from that as long as I can. So it's a wonderful thing that's happening right now. So you now are a role model to others. Mm. Uh, what do you try to impart to your organization? What values, what yeah. character, what integrity? How do you try to do that within your large company? You know what I do? I'm working side by side with them. I'm in the trenches. So I'm there with the crew. I'm there with the with the uh, actors. We're, we're all in it together. So I, they see me working really hard. They see me side by side. They see me smiling, having a good time. They see me, uh, you know, we start the morning with prayer. And not it's not mandatory because I don't want to get sued. But, but uh, we start the morning with prayer. And I just want to foster an environment that where every one can be themselves and be um, excited and come to work. You should see these kids coming to work when they come through the studio gates. Their eyes are like saucers, like this is really happening. It's really a phenomenal thing.